If you're looking for tips on how to create a better botanical painting, or maybe you want to make the most of your watercolour layers, then you're in the right place. Let's do it. So let's dive straight in. My drawing is already done and so that you can join in, even if you don't like that part, I provide you with a free outline and photograph you can work from and I'll tell you later on um, how you can obtain it. And this is how I trace down my drawings. A quick chat about materials. The paper that I'm using is made by Etcher. It's 50% cotton, an absolutely amazing value paper and I love using this one. This is an A5 size and it comes with a block. It comes with a black sheet that you'll need to remove. The colours that I'm using today are from Magello and these are Mission Gold, um, but of course you can use whichever paints that you have. Now I match my colours using this swatch card and I'll explain this in more detail in this video on the top of your screen. Uh, you don't need to use the exact colours that I'm using, nor do you have to go out and buy them, but if you'd like to join in and are unsure of the colours to use then let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help you. I have a ton of colours swatched out like this and I'll be able to help you from here. All the brushes I'm using today are from Rosemary & Co. I have a number six spotter. Spotters have stubby little bristles and are great if you're new to watercolour painting and also a number two snowdrop round. This is a pointed brush and an eradicator brush which is great for erasing. All of these brushes are synthetic and I will link all the materials that I'm using today in the description box underneath this video so that you can join in and um, paint along with me. Okay, so watercolour is all about building up our layers from light to dark. So to start with, I'm mixing up bright clear violet with a tiny bit of Prussian blue to create a really watery purpley tone. I'm also adding to this a tiny bit of that red violet. Now if you haven't got these colours, don't worry, you will inevitably have something very similar in your own kit. So bright violet, you could use any purpley tone and you could use um, any blue tone instead of the Prussian blue and red violet, any magenta tone will do but if you are struggling with your paint mixes and you don't know which colors to use then let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to help you from the colors that you have so with this watery mix I'm using my number six spotter notice how I'm cleaning my brush in the middle of my palette with a puddle that I have there and I'll explain to you why I use that puddle rather than use my glass a little later on as we work through the tutorial but for now I'm using my number six spotter brush to create my first wash so I'm applying the purple tone that I've mixed there on my palette to the petals that you can see here. Now when you look at the reference photograph you'll see that some of the petals have more of a grey tone, some have more of a purple tone and some have more of a blue tone or a pink tone and it's important to keep this in mind when you apply your first washes. So as you can see I've got a little bit of a pink mix there in that bottom puddle and I'm using this to apply straight onto my watercolour paper here where I see that kind of pinkish tone. So all you need to keep in mind for this first wash is your purple tones need to be in your purple areas, your pink tones in your pink areas and so on. All we're doing at this point is mapping out our colours and we're going to build on these a lot later. So watercolour is all about building up your layers slowly and carefully and making sure that each layer is dry before you apply the next. Okay, so as you can see, because I'm using a spotter brush today, this makes application to the larger areas a lot easier. If you're new to watercolour painting, I can't recommend these brushes highly enough because they make application very easy. They're rather like a felt tip pen. So I'm adding a bit more of that red violet tone and dropping it in wet on wet, which means the paint is wet here. And it also means that the colour will just splurge naturally into that paint I've applied. So just using the tip of my brush there to move that pigment into the pencil line and you can see even though this is a number six size brush it has a very fine point. Like I said earlier on all the materials I'll use I'm using today I will drop in the description box if you want to check them out for yourself. I have links that you can um, you can have a look for yourself. Okay so just dropping in that pigment I'm trying to keep out of that base there where we have that lighter value so try to keep out of the area where the petals hit the, the greenery and now I'm dropping in that lovely pink tone. So you can see already by changing the colours and the variation of tone we have different values and also different colours so that we know where we're going to be dropping in our different colours later on. 
So just using my brush and just changing the colors as I work through. This is really easy to do. Don't be frightened of applying two colors at the same time. All it means is that you're switching your colors from your palette. Just make sure that you have your colors ready mixed before you start to apply them. So that takes the guesswork out and you're not fumbling trying to mix your colors before you apply your paint. So have your paints ready mixed. My first wash is dry and I'm using my Snowdrop Pointed Round here. This is from Rosemary & Co. And all the brushes I'm using today are synthetic. I'm adding a tiny bit of indigo to that purple along with a tiny bit of the um, of Prussian Blue. I'm applying this mix to this area here with my fine brush. You can see this number two brush, again, has a really fine point and it's probably the finest brush I'm going to use today. You don't need to go smaller than this. It'll give you the lovely um, detailed areas. It's really good for painting in your details as well. So number two pointed round, this is from Rosemary & Co. Very springy brushes and really inexpensive. So really, really affordable. Notice how I'm applying these paints here and there. Now this is where sort of you can make the most of your layering with your watercolor. So what we're doing here is we're applying the paint to certain areas and just letting it settle into the paper. At this point, you can still see that initial wash underneath and it's important that we keep this wash free of paint. That way we can see the underlying layers. This is crucial to the end result and as we work through this tutorial, you'll see why. So I'm just leaving a little bit of a gap here and there. This is negative painting where we are applying, painting around a shape to create a shape. So picking up that Prussian blue, indigo and clear violet mix here, and I'm applying it as you can see using that brush. It's really important that you let each layer dry when you're painting with watercolor because if you go in too quickly, your paint will become sticky and muddy. So please make sure that every layer is dry before you apply the next. And it really shouldn't take very long because each of these layers is very, very watery. And that's another secret that's really key to good watercolor painting is you have to be a little bit patient with it and make sure that you build up your layers with a lot of water. That way they won't go muddy. A common problem that my students have is that they say that their paintings look overworked. The reason for this is usually that the paint goes on too quickly, too thickly. So be patient with it, apply your layers in thin washes, that way you're going to avoid that overworked look that everybody detests with watercolor. So just have your layers light and keep on going in with more and more layers. And it also makes your painting look a lot more dramatic simply because you haven't got that thick muddy look. Really, really important. Now back to that little puddle of water that I had in my, my palette there. By cleaning my brush in that little puddle rather than my water jar, it means that I'm not drenching the ferrule of the brush. That's the metal bit that keeps the bristles and the bristles in place with water and it doesn't drip onto my painting. This is my small eradicator brush and I'm just dipping it in the water, patting it dry in the kitchen paper and just lifting out some colour there. You can see just by applying a tiny bit of pressure I'm lifting out some paint. Adding a bit more of that violet tone and just adding another layer of paint to this bottom petal here. You can see that I have done some of the petals off screen. I've added a tiny bit of blue to the mix there. You can see that I've got the purple tone one side with some Prussian blue added to the purple mix on the other. And again, that gives it a bit of a variation. And you can see I'm using that damp brush to push my color around. When you clean your brush, make sure that you pat it dry before you blend. Again, that avoids those unsightly looking blooms that we don't want for this particular type of painting. They do have their place, but just not for this type of painting. Okay, picking up that colour again, this is the pinky tone, and just applying it on that little fold there. Now at the start of this video, I mentioned that we have a couple of ways that you can obtain the reference photograph and the outline if you'd like to join in with this tutorial and trace them down. So um, we have a couple of ways that you can have access to those. So let's just find out. We have a couple of ways that you can access our free reference photos and line drawings. We have our very own private Facebook group and as a member, you will have access to all of them here.
But in case you're not a Facebook fan, there's another way that you can access them, which I'll tell you about in a moment. But do consider joining us. We are a wonderful, friendly group, and you can post your finished paintings as well as your work in progress and have some feedback from me and our other incredible members. You can see here some of the completed works in our student gallery and having positive feedback is such an amazing confidence booster and a great way to learn. So if this is something that interests you, I've put a link in the description box underneath this video. But if Facebook really isn't for you, then don't worry because I will put the reference photo and the line drawn right at the end of this video so that you can pause, screenshot and you can print it out that way. We want art to be accessible to everyone, so join in and have fun. All of our YouTube tutorials are full length, so join us, join in, and become one of our watercolour wonders. Okay, so back to the job in hand. We've got our first washes down now for the, pet, for the flower, so we need to think about those greens. So here we have sap green, and I'm adding it to that a tiny bit of Prussian blue. These are very watery consistencies, of course, and also a tiny bit of indigo. And the same mix here with a tiny bit more... Um, of the bright clear violet added. So I'm just mixing up the colours so that we have this really light, subtle, greeny tone here. And I'm applying this to the base of, well, the underside of the, of the sweet pea. You can see it's at a rather unusual angle and I quite like painting my flowers sometimes from different views, which is why I really like this composition. So the colour mixes that I have here are sap green with indigo and Prussian blue, with a tiny bit of the bright clear violet in the, uh, the, in the darker colour that you can see there, and that's going to be the bottom part of the stem. But for now, I'm just applying these to the areas that you can see. So just adding a bit more of that bright clear violet to the green, and I'm adding this colour here to start to form the, um, the darker value that you can see on the stem. So some of the petals I've created off camera, I've completed off camera there, same process, but um, it would have been a very, very long video had I done them all one by one for you, but it is the same process. And remember, you can slow down this video or even pause it and rewind it. If you're missing any of it, you can go back and take another look. Everything's now dry. So once again, with my eradicator brush, I'm starting to pat that paper with that damp brush. So I'm cleaning the brush in the water, Patting it on that kitchen paper and just with a damp brush wiggling that paint to lift out some areas. Again, this is key to our layering and this will all make sense towards the end. By lifting out these areas and utilising those areas of paint that are still uncovered, these will start to play a really important part within our painting as we work through and you'll see towards the end what I mean. So with this mix of bright clear violet and sap, I'm now adding the darker values and adding some shape to the underside of the flower like this. Using once again, this is my number two brush, and just adding some of that darker green tone to the underside there to create some shadow where we have those little folds within the base of that flower. So adding that darker value here, I'm working through with that original green tone now that that first layer is dry. If you are new here, we release brand new content every single Tuesday. So if you haven't already subscribed, and you may want to do that and hit that little bell notification. So that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video and you won't miss out. If you are enjoying this video, could I also ask you please to hit that like button. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and it also means that more people get to see it. So just hit that like button, give it a big thumbs up. That would be, I'd really, really appreciate it. Now every week here on YouTube we create full length tutorials so you don't have to go anywhere else to watch them, you don't have to pay for them but if botanical painting is your thing and you really want to level up we do have a Patreon where every month we create more in-depth botanical painting tutorials that you just won't find here on YouTube and they won't have those pesky ads. So in case this is something that appeals to you let's just take a look. If you love botanical painting and want to know more then you may want to join our Patreon. We have different membership levels so that you can take your botanical painting to the next level. With our Clematis level you will have a full-length in-depth tutorial every month and if you'd like to make even more progress then check out our Rose level where we now have a mentorship offering feedback to help you grow. You won't find any of our Patreon tutorials here on YouTube and you can cancel your membership at any time. So 
So if you want to take your botanical painting to the next level, then take a look. I'll put the link in the description underneath this video. Okay, so everything's now completely dry and you can see where I've lifted out some more of those veins. Now this is a really crucial part to the painting. I'm mixing up exactly the same colours that I did in the beginning. You can see here when I'm mixing, you can actually pause the video and slow it down so you can see the colours there. It's exactly the same mixes as I had from the very start. So I'll recap them in a second for you. From the top, we have indigo with bright violet, and then we have bright violet with red violet working through. We have Prussian blue and bright violet, bright violet on the bottom by itself. And then we have the green, the sap green with bright violet there. And we also have a little bit of the red violet put in there. And I'm just picking up a bit more of that indigo and we want that to be a nice dark color. So where we have those patterns now, we can start to really enhance them. Everything has to be super dry and using the tip of my brush to paint in the areas where I find we need that darker value. And I've run out of space, so I'm going to the second part of my little palette here where I've added the same colors. So going through, using that damp brush to blend those in. Notice this time how I'm going around, picking up that pigment, just adding it to the darker values and blending it out, and yet still keeping those bright colors free. It's really, really important that you stay out of those bright areas. Now, where I lifted out that paint earlier on, you can see how I've painted around that little shape. So I'm now utilizing those negative spaces and painting around them. This will make our painting really, really come to life. So using that pink tone and blending it through, still noticing how those colors change, working around that little area that I've lifted out, cleaning my brush, patting it dry and blending it through. Now I do have a rather unique way of applying my paint and my blending process and I have done a video that explains this in a little bit more detail and I'll put that on the top of your screen right now. So if you want to click through to that and watch it later, you may find that it helps you understand um, the application process for watercolor a little better. So do have a look at that. I'm now applying the bright clear violet mix here. And once again, you can see I'm using my number two brush just to apply it to some of the areas, just leaving some negative space here and there. That means that the, flat, the flower doesn't look flat and each petal has its own kind of uniqueness and it stops it from looking too uniform. Staying out of the base once again, I want that area where the petal hits the greenery to have that area of light. So applying the darker value here again, this time we're just building up our colors. We already have that base in place now, so we can just go over them and enhance them. All of that guesswork has gone, so we are just um, applying that watercolor over the colors we already have, and I'm just adding some veins here once again with the tip of that number two brush. As I said earlier on, you don't need to change brushes too often with this tutorial. These brushes will do really, really well for the fine detail as well. I used to find it really annoying sort of having to keep changing brush sizes when I was painting. And it's one of the things that, um, one of the things that put me off watercolor at the beginning, finding that I had um, too many brushes and too many tools and it was all very confusing. So when I started painting, it was something that really used to put me off. So let me know in the comments below, um, what do you find the most difficult thing about watercolor? What's the thing that really puts you off using it? Let me know in the comments below and I'd be really interested to find out and perhaps I can help you. Now you can see what I mean by these little places, these little spaces that I've left out. Notice there how I was applying that vein around that negative space. This really makes your paintings come to life and makes them sing. By, uh, by accentuating those negative spaces with positive painting around them, really makes them come to life. And you can see me doing a few veins here, really outlining those little gaps that I've left, and that really brings it together. I think that looks beautiful, I hope you agree. I love that look of making those negative spaces come to life. And I'm also using the tip of my brush to outline the petal and add in a few veins towards the center here using a really light touch. And you can see now how that, by adding those lighter layers and leaving those gaps within your layers, that you can really add some dimension and form to your botanical painting. So this is really all about making the most of those watercolor layers and using those layers to your advantage. You can see now that I've put that initial wash in again, only this time a slightly darker consistency so that we have our bright violet Prussian blue there and our violet color to the base 
once again, even those little gaps, because we're going to be going over them with the veining later on and utilising them and making the most of them and using them to our advantage. Dropping in some of that darker value to the outside edge here. This is a mixture of red violet and bright clear violet. You don't have to be too fussy, just get those colours in. And once again, using that mix of green with the um, bright clear violet for that darker value that you can see on the stem there, working it up and blending it through. And just adding some darker value to the outside edge of that fold and you can see how that's negatively painted around that and how that now jumps up, jumps off the page and it really accentuates it. Adding some of that darker green, staying out of the folds because of course they are slightly lighter. And just adding some of that colour to the bottom of the stalk there and dropping it in. So once again I'm going over these little gaps that I've left with my fine brush and just accentuating those lovely veins. So I'm positively painting in those veins now around the negative spaces to make them jump out and I'm also adding a bit of a darker value to the outside edge there of that fold. So as I said, this is really making the most of your watercolour layers now. So we're using them to our advantage, making them stand out and jump off the page. So they look like accidents, but they're there on purpose. And use whichever shapes that you're left with to ac accentuate those lines. You can see even on the lighter coloured petals there that they look really, really soft and really natural. This way you're not getting a really flat looking flower. Now if you're painting botanically or even if you're just painting um, flowers because you enjoy floral painting, this is something worth considering. Looking at the different tones and shifts within colour within your flower because sometimes it's too easy to create a flower that's a purple tone, a purple coloured flower for example, but if you look at it more closely, there's a lot more going on. And it's recognising these different tones and different shades that make your paintings come to life. So it's all about those layers that create the depth of colour that you want and also the variation that makes it really come to life. So we're making the most of our watercolour layers. So once again, you can see where those gaps are now. I'm utilising them and painting around them to create lines and they will continue on to be the vein within the painting and that really brings it together. So we've still got quite a way to go yet. So carrying on painting and dropping in that colour, accentuating that outside edge, and you can see the colours here that I'm picking up from my palette um, as we work through. Don't forget, you can pause this video or um, slow it down if you want to, just to see what I'm doing if you've missed anything. Um, I'm trying to sort of read out the colours that I'm doing as I go along, but it can be quite tricky to remember every single time. So just take a note of the colours that I've mixed in my palette and you can um, follow along with me. And remember, you can post your finished paintings or your works in progress over on our private Facebook group that I mentioned earlier on, and I will link that in the description if you want to join us there. Please consider joining us. We are an amazing group of people. We are a fantastic group and um, everyone's super friendly, so do take a look. Adding a darker value here, this is just the purple colour, and blending it in. We have quite a few layers on this plant now, but it's fine because we've applied them thinly to begin with. We don't have to worry about anything going muddy at all. I'm outlining some of the areas here now to sharpen them up and bring this together. We've still got quite a way to go with this painting, but remember to stay right until the end so you can you can see the finished painting and also I'm going to put 
the um, simple outline and of course the reference photograph right at the very end of this video too so to be sure to stay around. So Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White, this comes in a little jar, you need to sort of squiggle it around, you need to mix it up and I'm applying this to the base here. I've added a tiny bit of water. I wanted to lift out some of that um, base color to make it a little bit whiter if we haven't retained some of that lighter color. And we're going to be using this to paint some of the hairs on the stem in a moment. If you haven't got Dr. B.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, you can use white gouache or you could even use Chinese white or something like that that's in your kit. But I highly recommend this. Now you can see here that I'm painting it onto the stem, but of course you can't see it on the outside edge. So to that I'm going to add a tiny bit of indigo and you can see in a moment where I start to take that indigo colour to the outside edge to make it more visible against that white paper. So we have bleed proof white on its own on the green areas with a little bit of grey on the outside edge. There another tip so that you can see those fluffy hairy bits, fluffy hairs on the outside of your painting. Just add a little bit of grey to the white just to make it stand out as you can see there. I've turned my painting around so that you can see me adding the other details um, right up against that purple paint that really stands out It makes it look more realistic. We have got um, quite a few botanical paintings, um, painting tutorials over on our channel, all free, over a hundred painting tutorials in total. And um, I will put one right at the end of this video so that you can click through for this video here. You can click through and take a look at that one as well, if that's something that interests you. Remember to stay right until the end of this video for those screenshots. We're almost done with this painting. Let me know in the comments what you think of it, if there's something you want to try for yourself. Um, stay until the end to see that finished painting. We're almost done here and I'll say thank you so much for watching. Um, consider subscribing and give me a thumbs up and I'll see you next week.